Hey there, darlings. Welcome back to the Farmer's Table. My name's Jess. If you're new here, I'm so glad you're here. And if you're not new here, I'm also glad that you're here. Before me, I have a lovely array of very fresh ingredients for my farm. I've been doing a kitchen day today. You may um, have already seen some videos from this day, and I'm sure there will be more that you will see. Getting a couple of projects knocked out, but I need to eat some lunch. And so I had a little smattering of recent harvest and I thought, you know what, this is the perfect fixins for a frittata for uh, Jeremiah and, and me to have for lunch. I wanna show you a little bit of what I've got here. So almost all of this is current, fresh and currently harvested from the farm. There's a couple things that I pulled out of the, the fridge and the larder. All right, so I have a green onion. I got out of the garden this morning. Some asparagus, thyme, some uh, freshly washed dandelion greens forged from the yard, beautiful fresh eggs, as well as a farmer's cheese, some prosciutto, and a sweet potato. So the beauty of frittatas is you can pretty much do what you want with them. Uh, depending on the size of your pie crust for a quiche or your pan for a frittata, I usually do somewhere between like five or six eggs and then a cup of some sort of milk or half and half or cream. Today I'm going to be using goat's milk uh, so that I can eat this. This is a goat's milk farmer's cheese. I just shot a video about how to make fresh farmer's cheese. That video will go up first. So if you're seeing this video, that video is already up. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. All right, let's go ahead and hop in. I've preheated the oven to 400. Here I'm going to set a cast iron pan over medium heat. I'm going to go ahead and put a little duck fat in this pan to go ahead and get it warming up. I'm going to cut up the sweet potato. Now I don't peel my sweet potatoes usually. Um, you can if you want to, but I find it unnecessary and I know there's, you know, nutritional value in the skins of the sweet potato. Whenever you saute them first, they typically do soften up pretty well. Now we do not always eat seasonally. We do eat some things out of season. However, I do like to try as a general guideline or standard to first and foremost eat what is actively coming in from our farm. So I do not buy a lot of produce at the store. I do still buy things like apples and bananas out of season largely like the fruits and stuff that my kids snack on i'll still buy celery and if i run out of onions and garlic that we grew i will go ahead and buy those but um that's all just really for preference and for variety i obviously could go without that stuff as far as like putting sides with our meals or the backbone of meals i'm usually trying to uh, go with what I can harvest right then. I actually just walked through my high tunnel and realized I have quite a lot of things that are kind of getting to the point of being used in there. Feels like it happens all of a sudden. I'm cutting these little bits of sweet potatoes pretty small uh, because I want them to crisp up nicely while I'm sauteing them. And I don't want there to be any like massive sweet potato chunks in my frittata. They just take longer to cook if they're big, and I don't want that. This is a purple variety of sweet potato that we grew in our garden last year, harvested them in the fall. So springtime, March, historically has been known as the hungry month because this is when, before you could just run down to the grocery store and pick up what you were out of, um, you were running out of food. The things that you had stored over winter were, were go wearing thin. These sweet potatoes, for instance, I think I have about a five gallon bucket of these left. We probably won't make it until the new harvest comes on before we're out of these, which is fine. They, they will only store for so long. Um, this is a very typical like March farm to table meal uh, with the foraged dandelion greens, um, with the herbs, the asparagus. This is like the very early stalks of asparagus are just coming up. Green onions, of course. Now this is the next planting of onions. I just pulled one up young and I'm gonna cut up the whole thing and put it in here. Um, you know, the chickens have just recently started laying a lot. The goats have kitted in the last month. I got them after they kitted. I just got back into goats, but typically like this really is what spring tastes like on a farm. This is all of the things that are just starting to produce again. Now the prosciutto, not necessary for this. Um, and it's obviously, it's not going to add a lot of nourishment. I'm just adding it in to give a little depth of flavor because with using the sweet potatoes and then the goat's milk is going to be kind of sweet. That is, there's a, there's a lot of sweetness in this and I wanted to bring something in that could add some depth. 
depth. I'll probably throw some paprika in it as well for the same reason. All right, so I just need to brown my potatoes. This is gonna splatter. Oh, not too bad. If you want your potatoes to get crisp, make sure you get your fat hot first. Anything like a potato in a cold pan with cold fat, it's all gonna start heating up together and it's going to steam instead of uh, sear. And so by putting these on in the hot fat in the hot pan, they're immediately gonna start cooking and we'll get some crispness to it, which I really want that because uh, I want those little bites that are embedded in this frittata to add some texture. All right, now while those are cooking, I've got my dandelion greens. Um, I just foraged these out of my yard. This is the greens that are on dandelion plants. I'll put up a little video clip so you guys can see. Um, when dandelions start, I need to wash these better. I just pulled a big pump of soil off this. Normally I would suggest to you to, when you're foraging greens, to wash them and then spin them in a salad spinner, which would be the best thing to do. I cannot find my salad spinner. I it must have gotten put somewhere. I really hope it didn't common, get commandeered by a boy for some experiment that is not appropriate for salad spinners to take part in. But it, hopefully it just got stuck somewhere and I'm just not seeing it. Dandelions obviously are considered a weed by a lot of people. The, the entire plant is edible. I'm going to be doing some kind of spotlights on the, the mighty dandelion this week because they are all over my farm and we encourage them. We do things organically so we, we're not hitting them with any sort of chemicals or anything like that. If you are wanting to forage dandelions, just be mindful where you're picking them, what they may have come in contact with. So. You know, the side of a highway, probably not the best place to go try to pick something to eat. Uh, but if you've got like an area in your yard or you've got some somewhere where it's not like a very public, highly trafficked area that could have encountered a lot of pets or poisons, that's where you want to get your dandelions from is, is a more private space. I just did a little rough chop on these. This is not a lot of greens. They're going to cook down to, to not much, but they're going to add a nice fresh flavor to the frittata. I'm also gonna take my prosciutto and just finely slice this. Again, this is not very much meat. It's more just to add the flavor. I have some thyme here. I'm gonna pull it off the stems. Green onion. And asparagus. I'm probably not gonna do all of these. It might be a little much in this size frittata. Anytime you're putting veggies in like a frittata or a quiche, you definitely want to saute them first because that's gonna cause them to release a lot of their juices. I mean, a lot of it just steams off while you're sauteing them. And that way you can be sure that you're not gonna have a bunch of liquid pooling up in your egg dish, which would not be great. These are so fresh. I picked them this morning. Raw asparagus is delightful when it's fresh out of the garden. All right, a little salt. These are starting to get crisp. This has been about, oh, probably six or seven minutes. Should only take about 10 to 15. Aren't these eggs just completely beautiful? Starling. I love colorful things so much. All right, I'm gonna crack each of these eggs first into a separate bowl and then throw it into the main bowl. Um, the reason I do that is because these are farm fresh eggs and even with the best of intention and fully taking care of everything, um, even the best of us miss an egg occasionally and if you end up with a rotten one in your kitchen, it is a scarring experience. It's really nasty, so I'll always crack it my eggs first in a little bowl because when I did encounter my first rotten egg it was the 48th egg I cracked into a big bowl making breakfast for my extended family which of course ruined every other of the 47 eggs that came before it. So that was six years ago and I'm still adjusting because of it. All right I've just scraped my potatoes over to the side. They're nice and crispy. And here I'm just adding all of these other ingredients. They are going to steam up a little bit. Um, if you wanted to preserve as much crispiness as possible in your potatoes, you would take them out. But it's not going to make that big of a difference. And I don't want to dirty another plate. 
this only takes like a couple minutes of sauteing these greens and this asparagus, if that, like a minute to two. I'm really just wanting them to release their juice, steam off, and then I'll be able to pour my eggs in. Here you go. Isn't that lovely? So I've got my six eggs in this bowl. Beat them lightly. And then I'm going to add in a cup of milk. I'm using goat's milk. This will be richer if you use cream here or half and half. You can use regular milk. Just whatever you have is okay. All right. I'm going to bring this off the heat. There's my sauteed filling. And from here, I'm going to take this crumbly goat cheese and I'm going to crumble bits of this all through here. I think whenever I do this, I think I usually say like five ounces of cheese if you're going off measurements. Um, plus, I usually do like five ounces of stringy cheese for quiche or frittata. And then a lot of times I'll do some Parmesan or something as well. Today I'm just doing the goat cheese. It'll be fine. I'm not measuring it. Also okay. I may go a little overboard in here because I am digging this cheese. It is so good. I am going to go ahead and put some paprika over here, as I mentioned, for depth of flavor. Salted my potatoes when I was cooking them, and then I do have that prosciutto in here, which is going to be salty. So I'll put maybe just a tiny sprinkle on, but I'm not going to put a lot more salt on it. And over top, I'm going to pour my eggs. And now this is going in the oven for about 35 to 40 minutes until the top is brown. All right, it's been, I don't know, 35 minutes, maybe 40 minutes. I kind of lost track of time, but this is what I'm looking for. Nicely browned top and edges. All right, I'll show you guys what this looks like. So I put chili crisp on everything. I am making a video of this. I had a resounding request for that after mentioning it in a video recently. I had to order something to make that. So that's coming soon. If you are interested in that recipe, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Um, I'm gonna taste one bite without the chili crisp and then I'll add it on afterwards. I put chili crisp on all kinds of stuff. All right, here we go. So many people have commented on videos that I've made on this channel and they're like, Jess, you don't taste your food. A lot of the things that I cook, I can't eat because of like how much dairy they have in them and different things. Um, but I did all this with goat, goat milk so I can eat it. It's really good. Um, so with the dandelion greens and the asparagus, kind of got this freshness, a little earthy along with um, the sweetness of the sweet potato and then obviously the creaminess of the cheese and the eggs it's very very good that tastes like springtime which is awesome but i do want to put chili crisp on it so thank you guys for hanging out with me today i'm gonna eat my lunch i bless y'all until next time